Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, March 2nd. Tesla has been ramping up deals to secure future supply of critical battery metals at upcoming mines, and now it's adding another lithium contract with a new mine in Australia. In January, Tesla signed such a deal to secure nickel from a new mine in the United States, then one nickel mine in Australia, but now they're going back for a second one in the land of Oz. In the Northern Territory, a company called Core Lithium made the announcement. This secures Tesla a significant supply of lithium, and while it does come from an up-and-coming business, it's not likely to fail because it is fully funded and fairly advanced. Core Lithium says that production is expected to start in the fourth quarter of 2022, although the deal states that the lithium will actually be supplied Tesla later. Tesla has now deployed and unveiled a big 37 megapack project in Alaska that'll help replace gas turbines with a more sustainable solution. According to Tesla, a single megapack has up to 3 megawatt hours of storage capacity and a 1.5 megawatt inverter. Homer Electric, a member-owned electric utility cooperative based in Alaska, announced the project two years ago, and now it has officially deployed. Eyes have been watching the project long-term since it's operating in very cold temperatures. Ford announced that it is separating its electric vehicle and internal combustion businesses into two different units. The move has been rumored for a few weeks, but it wasn't exactly clear what form it would take. Initially, rumors said that Ford was either going to spin off either the EV or internal combustion business, but now they have confirmed that they are operating two business units. One of them is going to be called the Model E Division, and the other one, the Ford Blue Division. The two divisions are going to be able to operate separately within the company and share resources, at least when it makes sense. Jim Farley remains CEO of Ford and becomes the president of the Ford Model E division. In Electrek's take, this move is Ford trying to reorganize its business as a legacy automaker, dragging a giant internal combustion business into a future that is undeniably all-electric. Hyundai Motor Group outlined its electrification strategy through 2030, which includes 17 new battery electric vehicle models. The accelerated approach to electrification includes an investment of nearly $80 billion in hardware and software technologies. Some talking points from the Hyundai Motor CEO are the following. Targeting 1.87 million EVs sold annually by 2030, 7 new EV models by 2030, 11 for Hyundai and 6 for Genesis introducing a integrated modular architecture in 2025, commit around $10 billion to boost software competitiveness in connectivity and autonomous driving, aim to achieve 10% of operating profit margin on EVs, and Hyundai also set a goal to secure a 7% stake of the global market share by the year 2030. Stellantis has officially joined the electric revolution by recently outlining its blueprint for a net zero carbon emissions by the year 2038. The conglomerate strategy called Dare Forward 2030 calls for 50% of U.S. vehicle sales and 100% of European sales to be electric by the end of the decade. The U.S. specific product offensive is planned, offering over 25 all-electric EVs in the coming years. Stellantis teased just two of them already, a Jeep electric SUV and a Ram 1500 electric pickup, said to be delivering leading performance, according to Stellantis. Rivian has announced price increases for their R1T electric truck and R1S SUV. In 2020, Rivian confirmed that the R1T would start at $67,500 for the base trim. Of course, that was before the chip shortage. The base version isn't quite available yet, and the quad motor version is the only one being manufactured. But it has recently become $6,000 more expensive. With these changes and several smaller options and accessories seeing price increases as well, Many reservation holders are seeing an increase of more than $12,000 for their order. The price increase comes as Rivian is trying to ramp up production and make its electric vehicle profitable while adding lower component tiers that will arrive as early as 2024. Rivian says that this is a result of inflationary pressure on the cost of supplier components and raw materials across the world. A poll shows that Rivian buyers are canceling their reservations at an alarming rate after significant price increases. Forums and social media are full of reservation holders who are ducking out, 
though it's hard to put a number on that kind of data. One poll of the Rivian subreddit shows a high cancellation rate around 50% out of 3,200 respondents. At Electrek, we held our own poll with the viewers and found 70% would cancel out of about 15,000 votes. Sorry, 1,500 votes. <laughs> it's important to note that similar things happened with Tesla canceling the cheaper version of the Model S way back in 2013. It was actually a very similar situation. In today's community comment, Martin Woods says, quote, slight correction, lucid production estimate for 2022 is 12,000 to 14,000 cars, not 12,000. As a Lucid shareholder, I am hoping they will under-promise and over-deliver. Their factory expansion, which will quadruple the size of their amp site, is still on plan. Thank you for the correction, Martin. It seems that the newer electric vehicle companies are feeling the brunt of the current supply chain issues. It kind of reflects on them as if they don't have the capability to produce as some kind of indicator, but the reality is that nobody can. So it's too bad that it affects them and their business and hopefully not their stock price too much. Interesting to see this all unfold right before our eyes. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.